Let's go to the beach. Alice and Jamie are about to celebrate Rose's birthday party this weekend. Watch the video and learn how to prepare to have a happy birthday party. Good morning, Jamie. What are you doing? Hey there, Alice. Good morning. I'm having my breakfast. I got some sandwiches with peanut butter. Do you want some? That sounds nice, but no thanks. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. Just teasing you, girl. By the way, do you have any plans today? Actually, yeah. I'm calling you in order to discuss Rose's birthday. Can you come over? Right now? That's right. Okay, I'm coming. Hey, come in, Jamie. So, what are you going to do? Give me some clues, please. I heard that she is a sea lover. Well, I intended to take her to Nantucket. Oh my goodness, where is that? It's a small island in Massachusetts State. I find it extremely beautiful. Looks like a wonderland. I bet Rose is going to love it, but I suggest we should invite Mott. Yeah, I think so. Let's call them to come over. We will talk about this. I'm so excited. Can't wait to see that. Yeah, I know. So am I. Hello? Guess who this is? I know it's you, Jamie. I saw your ID. What's up? Alice and I are going to tell you a secret. Can you come over to Alice's house? Sounds so mysterious. Okay, when? Right now. Oh, and Mott, too. We will be waiting for you. All right, we will be there in 15 minutes. Cool, see you. See you. Hey, Rose. Hi, girls. Long time no see. How are you, sweetie? I'm super great. How are you doing, Rose? I'm cool, thanks, guys. We know this weekend is your 17th birthday. Therefore, we decided to take you to Nantucket. Yeah, what do you think? It depends on you, sweetie. Don't be shy. What? Nantucket? Are you serious? No. It's real. Nantucket. Oh my goodness. I've never been there before. So interesting. Okay, so there are suggestions? I completely agree, dear. Good. I'm going to book rooms for us tomorrow. Let's take a car. We will go for a drive. Going there tomorrow? Cool. I will drive. So go back and prepare the luggage. We will leave early tomorrow morning around 5 a.m., okay? Okay. Yeah! <laughs> Alice, are you done? We're waiting for you outside. Hey, I'm coming. Wait a minute. Jamie, can you help me carry the luggage, please? Sure. All right, now we're here. Cool! I will drive! Get in the car! Guys, I feel so inspired. Don't worry, girl. We will get there soon. When was the last time you went to the beach, guys? I don't even remember. What's about you? About me? Almost two years, buddy. I miss the sea flavor. Waves, sounds, seafood, etc. Hey, do you have any problems with seafood, guys? No, I don't think so. Anyone here cannot swim? 
It's me. I cannot swim. What? I thought you were the best of us. So, what? You cannot swim, but you love the sea? I don't even know. I just feel so peaceful when I'm at the beach, you know? The atmosphere makes me so comfortable. So, if you love planes, can you fly then? Oh, I see. Oh yes, Rose, I can teach you how to swim if you don't mind. Sounds very good to me. Thank you so much, sweetie. You're welcome, girl. Oh my god, I can't wait to see it. I love the beach. It's one of the best beaches here. I hope I will catch some fish, but some octopuses would be better. I think the best things there are sands and waves. Oh yeah, blue of the sea and the sky. And light yellow of sands and sunshine. Absolutely yes. Do you ever worry about sharks or jellyfish when you swim at the beach? No, never. You know why? Because I know there are no sharks there. I can even surf, swim, ride a canoe. So what are you going to do when we get there? Uh, and I'm interested in picking up the seashells by the seashore. What a romantic sight. But why don't you buy it? It's sold everywhere out there. Of course, we could buy it in the souvenir shops, but I want to do it myself. Oh, and I just want to lie down and sunbathe. Hey, did you buy sun cream? What? Oh, I'm sorry, dear, I forgot. Okay, that's all right. We can buy it when we get there, but remember to apply sun cream before sunbathing, unless you want to be burned. Yeah, I got that. All right, we arrived. Don't forget your luggage and belongings. Woohoo! Let's start the party now, guys. I want to barbecue here. Give me a hand, Jamie. Great. Good idea, Alice. Come on, Jamie. Yeah, I'm coming, ladies. Rose, can you help me check into our room, please? Okay, I'm on my way. Don't forget to take the keys, Rose. After the barbecue, we will dive. Is that okay? And I want to play volleyball. All right, we will play all the sports that we love. And what about going fishing? Let's make some memories tonight. Agreed. <laughs> Do you guys want ice cream? Of yeah. course. Awesome, what a thoughtful girl. I will buy with you. Okay, James. Ah, oh, very comfortable. Like, like this and basking in the sun. <laughs> Thank you for organizing this trip. It's great. No problem, we all feel happy. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'm going to rent a canoe. Who wants to go with me? I think I will lay here and sunbathe. Hey, I just remembered we forgot something really important. What's that? Don't freak me out. We have not texted parents that we arrived safely. Oh yes, you're right. I almost forgot. Okay, let's get back to our room, take a nap. We will wake up to get twilight and build a campfire tonight. Yeah, that's what I want to hear right now, lol. Yeah, I'm tired as hell. <laughs> All right, sleep tight. See you. See, See you. you. Free time activities and hobbies. 
In order to do a survey for her school assignment, Evelyn came to the park on a weekend morning to interview the people there, watch the video, and see what the citizens usually do in their free time. Hello! Today is such a nice day, isn't it? Yes, it's good to see the sun after nearly an entire week of rain. Can I know your name, please? My name is Albert. What about you? I'm Evelyn. Nice to meet you. I'm doing a survey for my homework. Do you mind if I ask you some questions? Of course, no problem. Thank you so much. First, how old are you? I'm currently 64, turning 65 in a few weeks. All right. You're retired, aren't you? Yes, I am. What do you usually do in your free time? Before I retired, I was a chef. I love cooking, so I usually help my wife prepare meals for the day. That's the activity that takes up most of my time. Do you have any other daily activities? Well, once in a while I check around the house to see if there's anything that needs to be fixed. Maybe a broken light bulb, things like that. I jog around the park every morning, and in the afternoon, I take my dog, Philip, out for a walk. So, what about the weekends? We have a family reunion every Saturday, where my children and grandchildren spend the entire day at my house. We cook together, keep an eye out for the children, and spend hours talking until it's late and the children are all sleepy. Mm, that sounds really warm. You have such a desirable family. Do you have any particular hobbies? It might sound weird for my age, but I really like traveling. Whether it's just a road trip to the suburbs, a hike, or a long vacation to further destinations, I enjoy all of them so much. It's not weird at all. I think it's very inspiring. Who do you often go on these trips with? With my wife and my family, of course. But sometimes I go with my friend Josh. He's our neighbor and he also loves traveling as much as I do. So. Why do you like traveling so much? I spent my entire youth working to give my family a comfortable life. I didn't retire because I couldn't work anymore, but because I want to learn to live to the fullest. I choose traveling since it gives me beautiful memory and knowledge along the way. I see. I might be old, but I'm still strong enough to go here and there. I don't want to lie on a bed years later and blame myself for living a boring life. Traveling tightens the bond between me and my children. When we all had fun together, those are the moments that I will never forget. That's amazing. All right, that's everything I need to ask. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Good luck with the homework. Hi! Oh, hello, Lucy. You're here too? Yes, this park is my favorite place to come on the weekends. What are you doing here? Uh, I'm just interviewing some people to do a survey for my class assignment. Really? Are you finished? You can interview me. That's great. I'm still finding people to ask. All right, since you volunteered, we will start now. What do you usually do in your free time? Well, typically I practice dancing or drawing. I also go shopping too, but not all the time. Just when I have a reasonable amount of money to spend. 
Wow, dancing. You're on a dance team, right? Yes. Sometimes I practice for the team's project, but I still do it as a hobby. I started dancing a long time ago, and I love being on stage. So, why do you have these hobbies? Well, of course, dancing keeps me stay in shape. I'm not that tall already, so I need a nice body. I just mentioned the other reason why I dance. And I draw regularly to practice my skills, of course, to stay creative too. Great. What about shopping? <laughs> There's actually no particular reason for that. I just love going out and looking at things. It works as a way to help me learn to look at life from a more optimistic perspective. You know, the shops are always so colorful. And sometimes I get inspiration for my drawings after going shopping too. I can see most of your hobbies have something to do with art. Do you wish to have a career in this field? Yes, I want to be a fashion designer. Now when I think about it, I guess that's also one of the reasons why I like to draw. Do your parents support you? It took some convincing at first. My parents used to seem quite upset when I spent too much time drawing. But after we had a serious conversation about my future and what I want to pursue, they understood and later started to support me. That's amazing. I'm so happy for you. All right, that's all the questions I need to ask. I have to go now. Thank you so much and see you later. Goodbye, Evelyn. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry to bother you, but I'm doing some interviews for my homework. Can I ask you some questions, if you have time? Um, yes, you can. I'm not busy at the moment. Thank you so much. Can I know your name and age first? I'm Ricky Johnson, and I'm 35 years old. What's your occupation? I'm a financial manager. Seems like very busy work. Yes, you're right. Usually I have to take care of a lot of things for my company, so I don't have much time to rest. So, can you tell me what you usually do when you have the chance to take a break? Hmm, it's hard to answer since I rarely take breaks. If I have any free time, I'll just work more. I can't waste a minute. The time will come when I'm not wise enough for work anymore. I want to live financially comfortably when I get old. Wow, you work all the time with no means of entertainment at all? Let me think. Well, sometimes I play golf on the weekend. Cool. How long have you been playing? Since I started working for my company about four years ago, I believe. Most of the games I went to was for business purposes, however. Later, I found myself starting to enjoy that very much. Is there anything else that you do? I always try to finish work soon and come home to help my wife prepare for dinner. Of course, with the heavy workload, I can't do that every day, but I try my best. So I guess you can say that whenever I have free time, I either stay at home to help with cleaning, work, or go out to play golf. You sound like a real family man, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> I guess I can take that as a compliment. I work hard not just for myself, but for my family too. I just want to give them the best that I can. That's indeed a compliment. Okay, I finished the interview. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. No problem. Cleaning 
up the room. Situation 1. Joanne asks her children, Alex and Justin, to clean and decorate the house for Christmas. Children, come in here. Yes, Mom? We're coming. Alex, Justin, it's only five days till Christmas. The shop is busy and I will be working all day. I need you two to help me clean up the house and decorate it. Can you guys help me with that? Yes, Mom. Don't worry. We can do it. Can I be in charge, Mom? Of course you can. Alex, listen to your brother, okay? I have to go to work now, so see you guys tonight. Bye. Love you, Mom. Bye, Mom. Bye, guys. Be nice. We will clean up first, and then we will take the lights and decorations in the basement to hang up. Okay, Justin. I will go grab the broom to dust the bookshelf, and can you take out the trash? Done. Where are all the cleaning products for polishing? They are in the kitchen under the sink. These shelves, chairs, and furnishings need a once-over to remove any stains or buildup of dust. You're right. Do you remember the nice set of cutlery that only makes an appearance on special occasions? I will clean and polish this lovely kitchenware and make the Christmas meal even more memorable. While you're on a cleaning spree, don't forget to give decorations like mirrors and candlesticks a good polish too. Sure, Justin. Okay, we're done cleaning up the living room. Now let's hang up these lights. I will go get the ladder. And I will put up the Santa Claus figure. He brings us our gifts and toys, so he should absolutely be represented in our living room. Thanks, Alex. After this, we will hang up the ornaments together. It's one of the most fun parts of decorating for Christmas. Wait for me, Alex. I will put on a Christmas song as we decorate the tree. You can choose a theme for the tree ornaments. Which one do you prefer? Red or metallics? Um, red. And we should hang some of our old family photos to make it more special. Great idea. Ah, don't forget to hang stockings by the fireplace. Sure. Mom will be surprised when she gets home from work. Situation 2 Sally cleans up her house because she has a guest and Karen to help her. Hi Sally, it's Karen. How are you today? Do you want to go to the movies tonight? Hi Karen, I'm okay, but I'm afraid I can't come with you. I have so many things to do today. What do you have to do? I have to do several loads of laundry, vacuum the whole house, and clean the kitchen. Wow, that's a lot of stuff to do. Why don't you do some of that tomorrow? My mother-in-law is coming tonight. I invited her to my house for dinner, and she likes a very neat and tidy house. I know what you mean. My mom is very clean and organized, too. I should have started a few days ago, but I was so busy at work. Why doesn't your husband help you? He did help me. He mowed the lawn, cleaned all of the bathrooms, and set up the guest room yesterday. Wow, he did a lot, too. 
I also have to go grocery shopping. What a busy day. Do you need any help? No, that's okay. I'm not busy today. I can help you. Really? Could you go grocery shopping for me? I already made my shopping list. Of course. You can pay me back when I drop off the groceries. Thank you so much, Karen. No problem. That's what friends are for. Text me what you need and I will go to the supermarket right away. Okay. Hi, Karen, again. Thank you so much for helping me with the groceries. You're my lifesaver. I'm here to help you with the house chores. You can go cook dinner and I will finish cleaning up the house. Just tell me what I have to do. Okay. Can you please do the dishes, set up the table, and take out the trash? Thank you so much. I'm on it. Thanks. And please, at least stay for dinner. Sure, Sally. Situation 3. John wants to sell his house and he asks his friend Max for his advice on how to clean the house before selling. Hi Max, it's me John. Oh, hi John. What's up? I have something to ask. I want to sell my house in Texas. My wife has decided to stay in New York. Uh, and you're the real estate agent, so I need your advice on how to get my house ready to sell. You ask the right man. Okay, here is the list of what you'll have to do. Write it down. Okay, tell me. First and foremost, start by researching the local housing market. Take a look at comparable sales in your neighborhood to figure out the appropriate listing price for your home. Okay, will you help me with that? This is my first time, I have no idea what to do. Sure, no problem. Okay, do I need to do anything else? First impressions mean a lot, so before listing your home, give your home a deep clean. A deep clean? But how do I do it? Like sweeping and dusting? There are places and things in your home that are easiest for prospective buyers to spot. This means cleaning toilets, wiping down surfaces, mopping floors, cleaning rugs, and scrubbing bathrooms. Okay, I'll clean the fridge, dishwasher, oven, and bathtubs, sinks, toilets, inside and out. Good. Make sure that your fridge is emptied and that you've cleaned out every shelf and drawer. You already know that these are high traffic areas. You'll need to spend some serious time scrubbing here, removing every stain and bit of stray dirt. Anything else? Glass also needs to be dusted. Good mirrors help to make rooms look larger. So use a good glass cleaner and make sure to leave any glass surfaces as clear as possible. How about marks that have accumulated over the years on walls and counters? Uh, a good scrubbing should get rid of most of it. More pressing is any damage to the walls or counters, which might need to be fixed with either new paint or even putty. Okay, what should I do with the floor? Your floors are the easiest area to see in your home. Take the time to clean any carpets, and use cleaners that you might have on your hardwood floors. And the little things like light fixtures, switch plates, vents, and fan blades, and windows. This is a multitask part, so be prepared to put in a little work. Everything needs to be deep cleaned and replaced if necessary. I understand. Thank you so much for your advice. I will start preparing my house to make it look its best. Good luck. Talking about my country. Situation 1. 
Anne is a new student from London, and she discusses with her new friend Emma about the culture in England and America. Hi, Anne. Welcome to Boston High School. I'm Emma. I'm your new classmate. Let me show you around. Thanks, Emma. Nice to meet you. So, Anne, where do you come from? I'm from London. This is the first time I've traveled to America. Wow, all the way from England. I have always wanted to travel there. Living in a new country is fun and exciting, but it's going to be a big change for me. So I want to know more about this country. Can you share some common things about the American culture, please? Sure. The American culture is very interesting. First of all, Americans often prefer large and luxurious. To them, large can be practical. I think thinking big also applies to American food too. Most restaurants serve very large portions. Americans love going out to eat or ordering takeout. So if you're going to out to eat and aren't sure of the size, it's okay to ask your server what they recommend. Yes, because the U.S. is a melting pot of different cultures, bringing along a variety of tasty foods. That's right. Even in small American towns, you're likely to find pizza, Chinese, Japanese, or Mexican food. In larger cities, you'll find restaurants devoted to Ethiopian, Brazilian, or Afghani cuisine. That's cool. And I can see that many Americans love and follow sports. People say one of the most popular differences between British and American English is how they see the games. Really? Americans do not like small scores. That's why they do not like football. They tend to like games with big scores like basketball and American football. And the English people tend to be more patient in playing, and this can be seen in many games such as cricket and football. Oh, sports can be a huge uniting and dividing factor among Americans. During football and basketball season, you might see people getting into spirited debates about whose team is better. Football is fun to watch, but can be pretty confusing to follow. Can you help me out? I want to know why over a hundred million Americans watched the 2017 Super Bowl. Sure, no problem. What else do you want to know? What is the main religion in America? Back in my hometown, people are now getting away from the church and tend to be less religious. The United States is, remains a predominantly Christian nation. People in the United States tend to be more religious, especially those living in the southern regions. Oh, how about the people in America? Often Americans tend to be friendly. They tend to want to be part of someone else's problems as they communicate. The English people really appreciate personal privacy, and they try to give respect without too entering the private affairs of others. This difference is the reason why the English tend to be cooler. <laughs> I guess so. And you know that the British tend to be elegant in appearance, right? This is the opposite of most Americans, who tend to be casual. Jeans were created first in the United States, and we now know why they were not created in England. True. The English people tend to be more polite. Even the level of decency the British people have is often viewed as higher than the average of other Europeans. This tends to contradict the American way of communicating. They tend to bring out jokes which, for most English people, are quite rough. Americans also tend to smoke loudly. Many consider the United States and the United Kingdom are two nations divided by the same language. However, while it is true that both nations have historically shared a close relationship, they have major differences in culture. I agree. But it's a fact that both of these cultures are interesting. I want to travel to England to learn all about its culture. 
You can come with me when I go back to England this summer. Really? That's great, thanks. No problem. Situation 2 Linda and David travel to London, and their tour guide, Luke, introduces them to all the interesting facts about England and London. Hi guys, welcome to London. My name is Luke, and I'm your tour guide for today. Let me show you everything about this ancient country, England. I'm Linda, and this is my husband, David. This is our first time visiting England. Besides the two popular visitor attractions, I'll show you these travel experiences that can turn you into a real local. That's great. I want true local experiences, which are different from the basic places I saw online. You can count on me. Being the capital of England, London has a history dating back to Roman times a bustling nightlife, great shopping, and even beautiful views. What are people like in the UK? Brits have a mixed reputation in other countries. On the one hand, they're quite polite and proper. On the other, they're known for their loutish drunken behavior while abroad. Really? How? Well, both types of Brits are fairly common, but two activities that tend to unite all UK citizens queuing and talking about the weather. With all this diversity comes all different types of cultures, right? Yes. Walking down my street, there is an English pub, a burger place, multiple Italian, Indian, Thai, and Chinese restaurants. Most anything to satisfy your taste buds. Besides the famous English breakfast, fish and chips, what are the other popular foods in Britain? The UK's most popular dish is actually chicken tikka masala and the quaint cream tea, which derives from Devon. It's a light meal designed to be eaten in the afternoon, combining tea with dainty sandwiches and cakes. That sounds so delicious. I can't wait to try it out. How about UK art? The United Kingdom has a rich history in the arts. London's West End has a reputation akin to New York's Broadway. What genres of music are popular to the British? The West End is home to several theaters showing popular plays and musicals. Really? I want to go to a music festival before I go back to the US. Many genres of music have a huge following in the UK, from the country's super clubs putting on famous DJs to Wembley Stadium and the O2 hosting International Star. Oh, there are the UK's renowned music festivals. The likes of Glastonbury attract hundreds of thousands of music fans every year. That's right. And while you're in London, you can see performances of famous Shakespeare plays at a recreation of the Globe Theater on London's South Bank. I will. With no problem with transportation, it's easy to get around and see all of the amazing places that London has to offer. Whether it be the Tower of London or the London Eye, the city is exploding with cool things to see and learn about. There are over 100 museums, galleries, and exhibits to visit that offer insight into the amazing history of London. Wow, can you recommend things that people must try when visiting London? Here is a list of must-do. Take pictures with a red phone booth. Have a pint in a historic pub. Strolling around Nunhead Cemetery. Watch a show, Wilson's Music Hall. Drinking in rooftop bars. And stomping around Soho. I will say cheers as thank you as many times as possible, and I will immediately seem like a local, right? <laughs> That's right. Good luck and have the best time exploring this city. Thank you for your help.
wake up. Hi, Georges. You look sleepy. I didn't sleep enough, Flora. What happened? Did you get up early this morning? Not really. Last night, my friends asked me to go out and have beers. I was actually quite happy this morning. I had no hangover. What about you? Well, I actually woke up this morning quite early. I couldn't sleep, so I was a little annoyed. What time did you get up? I guess around 8 o'clock. That's not early. I was thinking it would be around 5 or 6 a.m. That is really early for me. I went to bed at 3 o'clock. I thought you were an early bird. You are wrong. I'm a night owl for sure, so I usually don't go to bed until about 3 a.m. I find it difficult to go to sleep early. Don't you have to go to work? I am on my summer holiday now. If I have class from the first period every day, so I will have to get up about 7.30 or 8 a.m. So I will probably sleep earlier. It is really challenging for me, you know. I try to go to bed early, 10 o'clock, 11.30, before midnight. And I try to get up early, 6.30, 7, before 8, but it doesn't always work. What about you? What time do you often go to bed? Well, I usually wake up maybe 6 or 7 in the morning, but I don't get up straight away. I stay in bed for a while, maybe read a book or something, check my phone messages, and I get up at maybe 7.30, 8 o'clock. On the weekend, I often get up at 6 o'clock to go to the park with my father. We go jogging together. You are having a very healthy life. What about during the holiday? If it's a day off, I get up at 9 or 10, and in the evening, I usually go to bed around 10, 11, sometimes 12. Do you need an alarm clock to wake you up, or you just wake up naturally every day? I actually have this kind of special mental ability. I feel it a bit weird. I thought that everybody can do this, but I found out it's not the case. But I can wake up exactly the minute I want, any time. That's amazing! Even though I wake up kind of easily, I can't wake up at a routine time. So I usually set the alarm on my phone and about two alarm clocks as well. That will usually get me up. So like, if I have to get up at 6.14 before I go to bed, I can say, okay, get up at 6.14. And I'll wake up at exactly 6.14. How do you do that? Tell me, please. Yeah, I don't know how. I guess your brain can just keep time. When I tell people this, sometimes they think, oh, come on, that's not true. But really, ever since I was a kid, I could just tell myself what time I want to wake up, and I'll wake up exactly at that time. That's really quite amazing. I wish it was that way for me, but it's not. Yeah, you know what's weird? Because I don't use alarm clocks. What do you mean? I can't. Like an alarm clock? The idea, actually. I can't have a deep sleep if I know that it's going to ring and wake me up. <gasps> an alarm clock is like somebody pouring cold water on you, you know? Yeah, I'm always paranoid about being late, so that's why I set three just in case one doesn't go off. But I can sleep any time of the day. Wow, that's like you. Do you like sleep? Like, it really doesn't matter what occasion or type of day. It's very easy for me to fall asleep. 
for as long as whenever. So that's why I need to have many things to wake me up because I could sleep 12 or 14 hours and not wake up. So do you take naps? Usually an hour. I find out if I go over an hour, then that's the danger zone because then if you sleep like two or three hours, you wake up and you're just groggy for the whole day. And if I sleep a lot during noon, when I wake up, I usually have headaches. So now I am trying not to take naps. <sighs> like, can you sleep with the light on? Yes, I can sleep in any situation. Light, noise, standing, sitting up, never matters to me. I can still sleep. So you're definitely a deep sleeper. I'm so jealous of that. Like just a tiny bit of noise or a little bit of light and I can't sleep. And actually, I probably only get an average of five hours a night, but I do sometimes take naps. Yeah, not for two. I mean, I can't sleep forever, but like seven o'clock, eight o'clock, then my body naturally wakes up. The flat I lived at before was incredibly crazy because there was a rooster outside and it didn't do what it was supposed to do, like normal when the sun comes up. The rooster is supposed to go er, 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 or whatever. But this thing did it at like 1 and 2 in the morning. It used to drive me nuts. So I used to always wake up at 2 because I'd hear this rooster going er, 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 and I just wanted to kill that bird. Did you go back to sleep after that? Yeah, of course. I went back to sleep. But the bird would wake me up regularly. Yeah, no roosters here. Likes and favorites. Camilla and Emily are two 17-year-old girls. They are chatting about their interests to plan for their winter holiday. Hi, Camilla. Are you all right? Yeah, I am quite all right today. How about you? I am so-so. I'm considering what I should do during the Christmas holiday. Have you had any ideas yet? Not really. But I probably would like to travel abroad. Which country do you like best? My dream is only to go to England. I think it is such a beautiful country. Why do you like it? Well, I want to visit Buckingham Palace and have dinner on the Thames River. I've been there once. I especially recommend you to come to Camden Market. Does it sell souvenirs? No, no, it is a food market. What kind of food do they sell? Every kind. It's amazing. Really? I'm so excited to hear that. Yeah, you know, you can find a lot of Asian food there, Caribbean food as well. Oh, wow. I always dreamed of having a food tour. Yeah. What is your favorite food? I'm crazy about Chinese food, to be honest. I think there is a Chinese restaurant near our school, isn't there? No, it is Japanese. I can only try it when I go to New York. That's why you must go to Camden. You can meet many Chinese, Korean, Thai, and Vietnamese, and so on. I will try to write it on my list. Is there anything you want to suggest to me? Have you heard about breakfast tea? Of course, English tea. I have seen it many times on social media. It would help if you tried that. Oh, it must be really delicious. Yeah, you should have a cup of tea on the two floor bus and go around London. Oh, that sounds so romantic. 
That is my favorite thing to do every time I go to England. What about you, Camilla? What is your favorite thing to do during the holiday? Well, I haven't planned it yet, but I do like to go skiing. Wow! I didn't think that you liked winter sports. I am just fascinated by snow. So I like everywhere that has a lot of snow or ice. What is your go to place to go skiing? Last year, my dad took me to France. But actually, my favorite country is always Switzerland. Hmm, man, you've gone to Europe so many times. It is because my family has business there. So, do you like French or Italian food? Well, not really. I am a big fan of fast food. I mean, it is unhealthy, but I still like it. Wow. Are you hungry now? Yeah, kind of. What about going to Burger King? Great idea, Emily. Harry and Emma have known each other for 10 years. They met at high school. But now they do not see each other often. This is the first time they've seen each other after graduation. <gasps> oh, who do I see here? Are you Emma? Yeah. Are you Harry? Exactly. Long time no see. Has it been seven years since graduation? True. I totally can't find you at all as you went to Asia to study. Yep, I just moved back to England for a year. How is your life now? Eh, it is so so. I feel like you still like hip hop. Well, I think I will forever. So, what is your favorite type of music? You know I like pop. And especially Korean songs, right? That's why you left me and went to Korea, Emma. Yeah, and I think my taste hasn't changed. But now I'm interested in country music. Is that why you moved back? No, my friend. I think when I get older, I'll have different interests. So I decided to go back home. What do you do now in London? You can guess. Are you a psychologist? Why do you think so? I remember you were really good at psychology when we were in high school. I took psychology as my major. But after two years, I realized that I prefer marketing. So you changed your major? Yes. But it was a fantastic experience for me. So then I just started working at a cosmetic brand as an advertisement analyst. That's cool. Finally, you came back to England. <laughs> Hopefully, it is a good decision. So, are you now a chemist? Do I look like a chemist? When I have a hip hop style like this? I guess not. But perhaps now chemists change their uniforms? After one year of graduation from university, I dropped my job and became a photographer. Really? That's such a significant change, Harry. Many people disagreed with me, but I think it is the right choice. Ah. Uh, are you going to the football match this weekend in Caulfield? Emma, do you also like football? Yes. Why are you so surprised? Because what I remember about you is a girl with a pink backpack that didn't like sports at all. I'm changing now. My favorite color is not pink anymore. I prefer blue currently. I like blue too. 
It seems like we are still similar to each other after a long time. Let's see. What is your favorite movie? Titanic. You know that, right? We watched it together, Harry. <laughs> and we were crying together as well. It is still the best movie for me now. That's true. We should watch it again every winter. Do you like winter as well? Yes. What about you? Of course. We loved snowboarding. I still enjoy snowboarding. Did you change your favorite sport? Never! Snowboarding is still the first thing that comes to my mind every winter. We should go together one day. Oh, the sky is darker. Are you going to have dinner? I guess so. Uh, what about going to have some beefsteaks? Do you remember my favorite food? It is not your favorite food. It is ours. <laughs> Well, my friend, long time no see. Have some beefsteaks and then try some cocktails later? Absolutely okay. And are we going to the restaurant by bike? Yes, definitely. We still know each other's tastes, Emma. True. Let's go. Talk about being sick. A sick classmate. What's up, guys? Nothing much. Have you done the homework Mr. Watson gave us? It's due tomorrow, so I haven't done anything. Oh, really? What a relief. But I'm afraid I got bad news. Chris is sick, so he won't come to class today. He is sick? With what exactly? Nobody told us. I hope he is still doing fine. Well, I only knew about this minutes ago. I heard his mother talking with our teacher in the hall. She mentioned him catching a cold last night or something. Is he okay? His mother sounds not so worried about his condition, so I assume he is fine. If it's really just a common cold, he will be fine in a few days. Should we call him to check up on him? I guess he could use some encouragement. But it's only seven in the morning. I think he is still asleep. Let him have his rest. Sick people desperately need sleep to recover. We can text him, though. He can read it whenever he wakes up. Good idea. What should we tell him? Just simply explain how we know he is ill and ask for his condition first. Then tell him we got him covered on schoolwork and other news. Also tell him to take his medication seriously. There was one time that he was sick, but delayed taking medication, so it continued for like two weeks. He got ill more severe than a common cold. I can't remember its name, though. I recalled. Anything else? Should we visit him after school? Okay, but let's buy him some fruits along the way. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. And some oranges would help out a lot. I agree, then. I'll tell him in advance. What else can we do to help him? Mr. Watson homework? Knowing his nature, I doubt he has given it a single thought. Well, then... To help him is to help ourselves, too. Hey guys, Chris is replying to me. What did he say? He thanked us for caring, and he got the best person around to look after him. 
Does he mean his mom? Yeah, I also assume he was talking about his mom too. Anyway, Chris told me that he is going well and he had enough fruits to last a week. He would appreciate a visit from us, though. Then we will go straight to his house after school. I guess so. Tell him that, and also mention that tomorrow is the due date for Mr. Watson's homework. And I'll tell him that we will come over to finish that thing, too? It's for the best. Okay, I'll tell him exactly that. Well then, we will talk later. Okay. Calling in sick. Dad, can you please call Mr. Ronan and tell him I need two days off? Sure, son. You should use my phone to talk to him. I saved him as Mr. Ronan on my phone. Okay, give me a sec. What should I say to your boss? Just introduce yourself and be brief about my current condition. Hello, Peter. What's up? Hello, Mr. Ronan. I'm Peter's father, Morgan. I'm calling you to address that my son is sick today. He got a pretty serious flu yesterday and is currently unable to go to work for the next two days. I see. I know your son, Peter, personally, so it's okay. Do you have something that can prove your son's current condition? A piece of paper like a doctor's note, a hospital bill or something? I'm sorry if this demand is offending, but it's not me who required the confirmation. Company's policies, you see. I understand. Uh, we do have a doctor's note if you want confirmation. It's here somewhere, but we can confirm it. Thank you for your help, Mr. Morgan. And fortunately for your son, I still have time to call in your son's absence. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him soon in the office. No problem, Mr. Ronan. You don't have to worry. I will take care of him myself. By the way, can I talk to Peter, please? Let me ask him first. Please give me a sec. He wants to talk to you, Peter. I guess I can talk for a bit. My throat still hurts so bad, though. Can you get me a cup of water, please, Dad? Here, I will go get you one. Hi, Ronan, you wanna talk to me? Yeah, dude, get well soon, okay? If you need to extend the deadline, just let me know. Okay, boss. I will get back to work soon. Make sure to send me the doctor's note. I still need the confirmation. I talked to your dad about that. I will send that to you as soon as possible. Nice. Make sure to get the rest you need and think positive. Don't push yourself too much. And just relax, we got you covered. I don't want you to go around spreading the flu in this place anyway. I know, Ronan. I appreciate your understanding. Thank you so much, boss. You are the best. Okay, okay. Point noted. Goodbye, then. Yes, sir. How's it going, son? We're set, Dad. Uh, he talked about the doctor's note and something about it being a confirmation. Yeah, I have it here, Dad. I will send him now. All done. Now I can rest. Conversation with Mom Situation 1 this is the first time her 15-year-old daughter has had a holiday in Vietnam, so she is really excited to want to know the preparations and to-do list for the Lunar New Year. 
Mom, we can't go back to England this month, can we? That's right, my daughter. Just a few flights to England due to COVID-19. This time is close to the Lunar New Year in Vietnam. This year we will experience the Tet atmosphere in Vietnam. Awesome! It's my first time, but I also miss my paternal grandparents so much. I know, but we have to protect ourselves first. This also means you are protecting people, right? You can make a video call with them and tell them the reason why you're staying in Vietnam. Your grandparents will understand. Yes, I'll do it. That's good. Alice, are you excited about Lunar New Year? A hundred percent. This is the first time I've been in Vietnam on the Tet holiday. Even I don't know more about this important event. So do you want me to talk about something outstanding before and during the Tet holiday in Vietnam? Absolutely! First, I want to know what we need to prepare for this event. Okay, I'll tell you about Kitchen Guardians first. Have that day? Is that day which we lead worship some people protecting our kitchen during the year? Basically, it's like that. According to the lunar calendar, the day is the 23rd of December. In every Vietnamese household, besides the ancestral altar and fatherland altar, there is also the existence of another one called the God of Kitchen altar. In Vietnamese's opinion, the God of Kitchen is one who knows every nook and cranny of a place. Knows every nook and cranny? Really? But I haven't seen them before. Oh, my Alice, you're 15 years old. Why do you think they exist in reality? It's just spiritual, daughter. We cannot see. We just believe in it. In other words, they are like ancestors. I thought I could see them and ask them for help when I'm punished by you. <laughs> I really need to learn much more about the Vietnamese rituals. I'm considering myself a silly person. What a shame. Unfortunately, they don't exist, so you'll be punished without any help if you're naughty little daughter. Mom, I just remembered someone told me that Alter Joss papering burning. We will release golden carp into lakes, which symbolizes that Kitchen guardians ride carp to heaven to deliver an annual report on the household's activities to the... I don't remember who receives the report from them. Jade Emperor. Yeah, it's him, Jade Emperor. Do you know what we do after the Kitchen Guardian Day? I... I don't. Why do you ask me such a difficult question like that? This is the first time I've celebrated Tet in Vietnam. That's why I want you to guess. If right, you'll be rewarded. Mom, you don't tell a lie? Certainly, I'll give you a close rule. That's so easy. Related to worship. <laughs> With the clue... The question is a piece of cake. Cleaning the altar is my answer. Correct. So what do we do next? Mom, you told me you just ask one question, and if I answer correctly, I'll be rewarded. That's not fair. Alice, I'll still reward you. I don't challenge you with the second question. Oh, let me think. We go shopping to buy some adornment, right? Yes, that's true. But we adorn after few days, not suddenly. Often around three or four days. So exciting! I love this part most. I'm addicted to decorating. If so, I assign you this mission, okay? Believe in me. I'll decorate our house like a palace. 
It's up to you. Lots of things to do, and I'm so looking forward to celebrating, Tet. These are all your favorite parts, and now I'll tell you the part of work you hate. Don't tell me this is clean up, Mom. It's my nightmare. You are right. We have to clean up before Tet. Oh no. Why, Mom? I just clean up a little bit each day. As long as you have to finish this work before Tet. Please give me a reason, Mom. <laughs> According to Vietnamese opinion, we shouldn't sweep the house. Or empty out rubbish on the first day of the year to avoid luck and benefits going with it. So that's why you must clean up before Tet. Moreover, you'll feel relaxed when entering a spotless and beautiful house during Tet, right? Rational. I'll try my best to welcome my first Tet in Vietnam. Happy to hear that. Well, you can go to the flower market. People often choose gladiolus, lily, or tulip, besides peach blossoms and apricot flower. Will you go with me to the flower market? I don't know how to choose fresh flowers. I will. One more important thing we must do is cooking New Year Eve meal. I know that. I'll cook with you. I love the feeling of catering for our beloved family members. And during the Tet holiday, we are gonna cook New Year's meal and then we visit relatives and friends to exchange New Year wishes. You'll receive lucky money from them. <laughs> wow! Probably I'll have lots of money for the special event. In addition, a lot of people gather at the Temple of Literature to watch calligraphy masters writing calligraphy scrolls. I've seen it before. When will we go there, Mom? Situation 2 Mother and daughter are talking about daughter's boyfriend. On the third or fourth day of January in the lunar calendar, well, you can ask your boyfriend out to go to the Temple of Literature. With our family, and then we'll have dinner together. Mom, why do you say that? I don't have a boyfriend. What did you say? You don't have a boyfriend? No, I don't. Really? Are you sure? Mom, why would you do that to your little daughter? I've had a boyfriend. I didn't say wrong. But how did you know? I tried to hide it. I saw you smiling when you were <laughs> chatting with someone. I guessed it's your lover because you always laugh out <laughs> loud when texting with friends, but at that time you just smiled. How observant you are. And you don't need to hide that from me. You can confide in me. I'm really open-minded about that. Now, tell me how he is. I want to know that my little daughter is happy in love. He's so handsome and gets a tan. This makes him look more manly and strong. Probably he is really hardworking in going to the fitness center. Vice versa, you're a couch potato. Mom, I'm much harder than ever before. Okay, I recognize it. How about his personality? I was impressed by his cold face first. I did think that he was unpleasant and willful person. Even I find him a little stubborn as a mule. But now by myself, I realize that I was wrong. You don't have an eye for anything, my Alice. <laughs> I know that so, Mom. Don't rub salt in my wound like that. Well, surely your boyfriend is careful. As for you, careless. He is very careful. He often reminds me how to do this, how to do that. In addition, he's also talkative. This is totally different from my first impression. I'm happy to hear that. So what else? 
Oh, a lot. I can't tell everything about him in one day, Mom. My boyfriend is clever and cautious. He does almost everything in a careful way. What about a sense of humor? Because my daughter likes someone who has this character. Certainly. <laughs> Exciting, outgoing, funny. He has it all. He's really serious to explain to me when we have in trouble or I do something wrong as well. According to what you've said, I think he can be a reliable person. It's good for both of you. Is he ambitious? Absolutely, but not too much. He wants to be independent in every aspect, so he wants to move up the career ladder as soon as possible. I like his point. I can take some comfort when hearing that. But Alice, you must remember one thing for me. It is said that love makes blind, so don't be too blind. Yes, I'll remember it. I love you, Mom. I love you, too. Oh my god! Now it's 3 p.m. I'm late. I have to go to the office now. See you tonight. Bye, Mom. Drive carefully. Okay, bye, daughter. A health problem. Abdul and Sally are talking about their illness experience and their ways to keep themselves healthy. So, what is the most serious illness you have ever experienced in your life? I would like to talk about a car accident that happened to me a few years ago and resulted in serious injury injuries. Oh, really? How was it? It was a horrible experience that I would not want to relive. Oh, dear. Tell me what happened, please. My family was driving home when a big truck crashed into our passenger side. After the accident, I blacked out and was transported to the hospital. When I regained consciousness, I discovered that I had five broken bones, several ruptures, and many cuts and bruises. Did you have any treatments after that? To restore the collarbone and leg bone, I had to go through operations, during which metal rods were put onto these bones to fix them. Not surprisingly, I was in severe pain. So physicians prescribed me to take painkillers and other medicines for a couple of weeks. <sighs> How long did it take you to recover? During my recovery, I wasn't able to walk properly, and my life then was very difficult. But after several months of proper treatment and physical therapy, I fully recovered. Does your life change a lot after? I even took up karate soon after. Although the illness was definitely not a pleasant experience, I am very happy and grateful that now I am healthy. Probably, I learned to value health and become stronger. Wow, luckily you are healthy now. Yes, I think so as well. What about you? Did you experience a lot of illness? Well, I guess I will tell you about one memorable experience. It happened a few months ago when I had the flu coupled with a sore throat. <coughs> what happened? <coughs> a week before it happened, I was so stressed with work, I had stayed up late night in the night in the office to meet several deadlines. A lack of sleep and I couldn't also eat on time. Oh, you must have been really tired. My body started to feel weak, I started to have slight fever and colds. I knew it was going to be bad because I was having headaches and severe muscle and body aches. I also started to have a dry cough and my throat hurt. Did you go see the doctor? It lasted for about a week, 
I went to see a doctor so I could get the right prescription. I was advised to have bed rest for a few days. I was not able to report to work for a week. Luckily, I have already finished all of my deadlines before it happened, but it had still affected my life because I had failed to do my daily routine. I also asked my mom to take care of me since I lived alone. When I went back to work, there was a huge pile of paperwork waiting on my desk. How is the healthcare system in your country? Costa Rica is actually a pretty healthy country. We have one of the only five blue zones in the world, which are these areas where, because of their lifestyle, population frequently reaches a hundred years or more. Is that one good signal about your country? But unsurprisingly, one of the major health problems that we face is obesity. Because our modern lives are so frequently making us sedentary and working in office spaces and enclosed rooms. Especially under the current conditions, we tend to become overweight. That's true. Keeping a healthy lifestyle is not a priority for a lot of people. Especially because they have very busy routines. You know, that being said, it is important to keep a healthy lifestyle. And it's one of those problems that the entire world seems to be facing. At the moment, I don't belong to a gym, but I go jogging. Usually I go jogging four times a week, and I also go in the morning because for me it's the best time to exercise. Because it keeps me awake all day, but at the moment I don't do any other exercise. Wow, just the running. Just the running. So what do you do to keep fit? Many things, but I think discipline is one of the most important things. You need to be a disciplined person. Is it hard to become a disciplined person? A little bit disciplined person. But saying that it's not hard to be disciplined because you do things that you like to do, for example, I do yoga, and I enjoy yoga. So every day I get up in the morning and I do an hour of yoga, and this is very good for your body. Well, so basically, one of the pillars of your way of staying healthy is to have the discipline to exercise regularly. But it doesn't have to be strenuous, just little things. A little bit of exercise every day. Something simple, something easy. Something you like to do. Whether it's walking, or whether it's riding your bicycle to work instead of taking the subway, or, yeah, doing some yoga. I guess you are a sporty person, is that right? Not really, just a little bit of exercise a few days a week, and it will help you stay fit and healthy. Do you have a healthy diet? Reasonably healthy. I'm semi-vegetarian, so I don't eat meat. I only eat fish, and I eat lots of fruits and vegetables. Have you ever eaten fast food? Well, I also like my junk food, and usually once a day I eat either potato chips or cake. So yeah, I have a balanced diet. What kind of fruits do you like to eat? Well, I like all fruits. I love all fruits except pineapple. I hate pineapple. I don't know why. I just don't like pineapple. I don't like the taste. I don't like to chew it. It just feels funny. But I love apples. I love bananas. I love oranges. I usually have an apple every morning for breakfast. It's very easy to eat. And I just love apples because you can take them to school. You can eat them quickly. They're very easy to eat. Me too. I also like oranges. And I love orange juice. So sometimes I make fresh orange juice in my kitchen. And I love to eat bananas and strawberries together. So my favorite snack is to cut up some bananas and then cut up some strawberries and mix them together and then eat them. Well, it sounds like you really do like a lot of fruits. Oh yeah, I do. In the restaurant. 
Max is going to propose marriage to Sophie in a luxury restaurant. Watch the video and learn how to book a table in advance and communicate with the waitress. Morning. This is Max. Is this the telephone number of Oblix Restaurant? Good morning. Oblix Restaurant speaking. How can I help you? I'm wondering if I can reserve a table for tomorrow night. Let me check, Mr. Max. I'm so sorry. The restaurant is full. Would you like to make a reservation some other time? What about Friday night? That's great. On that day, the restaurant opens until 12 p.m., so you can book any time you fit. Would you like to sit by the window or near the doorway? A table for two at 20 o'clock, please. I would like to book a private corner or a quiet table because I have a plan to propose marriage to my girlfriend. I'll note right here, your booking is confirmed at 20 o'clock with two people. A quiet table, is this correct? Yes. Anything special do you want us to prepare for you? Please prepare a bunch of red roses and jumbo balloons for me. Anything else? Hmm. Can I have you stick letters in the balloons? Definitely, sure. Which letters do you want? Marry me, please. That's all for the reservation. Thanks. I noted. Max, I have to fill in full personal information, so please leave me your full name and phone number to contact you more easily. Okay. Johnson Max. My number is 020-3859-4788. Thanks. I'll read your information again to confirm. Johnson Max, 020-3859-4788. You booked a quiet table in advance on Friday night at 20 p.m. That's right. Many thanks. You're welcome. Welcome to Oblix Restaurant, sir. Have you booked in advance? I did. What name is the reservation under, sir? Johnson Max. Please wait for me a few minutes to check it. Your table is ready. I'll bring your server for tonight. This way, please. Your table here. Would you like me to take your coat for you? Thanks for being wholehearted. You are welcome. Can I take your order, sir? Sophie, what would you like to eat? I'll take the time for you to decide. May I have chicken Caesar salad for my starter? I'm so sorry. We're all out of this salad. You can try the salmon salad. It's also our specialty of appetizers. It's okay. One of this salad, one set of french fries, one lobster and scallop ceviche. What else would you like to eat? Hmm, two beef steaks for me. How would you like your steak? One rare and one medium. What would you like to drink? We have white wine, red dun, tequila, orange juice, and so on. Um, two shots of tequila, please. Miss Sophie, do you want to try spicy chicken? It's our special dish today. Sounds good. We'll take that and pasta too. I'll order dessert later. Thank you. Okay. Please wait for just a moment. Sophie, do you enjoy the romantic atmosphere? Absolutely, I say yes, Max. I really love it. Thank you, my man. I'm very happy to hear it. A surprise awaited us at this dinner. 
Really? I'm looking forward to it. Sorry for the disruption, but would you like to taste the tequila while waiting for the main dish? Allow me to pour wine. Yes, thanks. Sir, your main dish is ready. Shall I serve it now or after a while? Please bring it now. I wish you have a delicious meal. Can you bring me the ketchup, please? Ketchup here, sir. Hope you enjoy the meal. If necessary, please call me to serve. I will, thank you. Excuse me, can I change the order because Max is allergic to orange in the salmon salad? And could you pass me the salt, please? Of course. What would you like instead? A seafood salad, please. And one beef steak isn't my order. I ordered one rare and one medium, but this is well done. Oh, it must be a mistake. Let me check and change for you. I'm so sorry. No problem. Everyone makes mistakes. Thanks for your sympathy. Max, do you find that this tastes a bit off? A little, but it's okay. Yeah, same to you. Excuse me, would you mind heating this up? I'll change it for you straight away. Anything else you want to request, sir? That's all, thanks. Can you take a bunch of red rose and jumbo balloons that I requested now? Sure, sir. Keep enjoying the meal. I'll prepare now. Sophie, close your eyes. I have a big gift for you. Okay, now open your eyes, honey. <gasps> oh, wow. It really touches me. Sophie, will you marry me? Besides the word yes, I can't say anything else. Congratulations! Wish you the best of luck in your future together. I'm so happy, Sophie. Let's take a sit and continue having the romantic dinner. Excuse me, can we have a look at the menu to decide dessert? Are you ready to order? Two panna cotta, please. I'll be right back with your dessert. Oh my god, this dessert is so great! Sophie, I bought two cinema tickets for tonight. Shall we go to the cinema after this meal? Word. Please get me the bill. Here is your bill. There is a 10% tax and service charge. Both are included in your bill. You can check it again. Can I pay by card? What kind of card have you got? We accept Visa card and MasterCard only. It's bad luck. I don't have it with me now. Do you take credit cards? We charge 2% extra for paying by credit card. It's okay. I'll get this and round the money up. The change you'll keep it. Thank you for your tips. Many thanks for the warm welcome. Such great customer service is to be commended. We did have a delicious meal. Thank you very much for your compliment, sir. Wish you and Mrs. Sophie many happy years together. Hope that we'll see you soon. Goodbye. I'm sure I'll be back to your restaurant to savor other dishes. Bye. See you soon. Talking about university life. Situation 1. Nick tells his father, Joe, about his first day of university. Hi, son. How was your first day of university? It's good, Dad. 
but I have to admit that it was quite different from what I had expected. Really? How is it different? Well, I had some strange experiences. I was baffled to see students playing outdoor and indoor games and enjoying radio programs during class hours. Wow, that's awesome. Students are free in their movements these days. Yes, Dad. There is no restriction on uniforms. People can register their own class schedule. They can do things according to their choice. So how is the campus? I was very much delighted to see that the grand library of the university where I could find all the books on every subject. And the laboratory is fully equipped. I can't wait to perform ex experiments there. Wow, that's great. You kids these days are so lucky with the infrastructure like that. You can study so much more effectively. So did you make any new friends? Not yet, but I found all the newly admitted students in the high spirits. They were all happy to make friends. I will attend a meeting for new students and hopefully I will have some new friends. And what about your new teachers? My new teachers are quite different from my high school teachers too. They treat us like adults. Because you're all 18 and over, you have full responsibilities for your actions from now on. I know, Dad. I'm so excited to start my university life. Good luck, son. I remember my first day at Stanford. It was a sunny and bright day. I woke up early and I spent a lot of time choosing what I wanted to wear. I felt excited and at the same time I was very nervous because I don't know anybody and I was lost. So what did you do? I didn't know how to get to my classroom. I had to ask one person about the building where I was going to take classes. And luckily he was going to the same class as I was. This person was very nice and told me the right direction. Was that the day you met Uncle Ted? Yes, he is my first and best friend from university. He sat next to me in that class and we had to do a group project together, then we became best friends. I think that it is natural that on the first day we feel nervous, but things always have a happy ending. I am always going to remember that day because I had the opportunity to meet more people. And most importantly, I met the best friends that I have ever had. Don't worry, son. You will meet the best friends at university. Thanks, Dad. Situation 2 Mike is a freshman. He meets Jacob, a junior, and asks for his advice about university life. Hey, are you new here? I'm Mike. I'm a freshman. No, I'm a junior. I'm Jacob. Nice to meet you. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Where do you come from, Jacob? I'm from Miami. How about you? I'm from LA. What is your major? I'm studying computer science. Wow, that's cool. My major is English literature. One of the biggest reasons why I chose that is that I want to be a writer. Oh, wow. I hope I can work as a computer engineer after I graduate. I'm so nervous about the next semester. I'm afraid of failing. I have test anxiety. How about you? Believe me, I still have concerns too, but don't worry. Do you want some advice? Sure, thank you. What was your biggest fear before you began your freshman year of university? I worried that schoolwork would be too hard. I wouldn't be able to keep up, or I wouldn't know the correct answer when called on in class. But everyone makes mistakes, don't worry. 
but what should I do if I fall behind in my classes? If deadlines are fast approaching and you're behind on your work, you should structure your time, take notes, do extra homework, ask your friends things that you don't understand. Thanks. You make me feel so much better. But how do I make the most effective notes? Before you even think about heading to class, make sure that you've read all the pre-assigned reading from your professor. Go to class with a positive attitude and pay attention. Experiment with different taking notes techniques to find one that's right for you. Should I take part in a club or student organization? Personally, I think taking part in one can be a rich and rewarding experience. You can find new friends that likely share the same interests. Are you a member of any student organization? And what clubs should I participate in? I'm the English Book Club, and I think there are many student clubs and organizations for different majors and departments. Such clubs can be a lot of fun, as well as a great academic resource for you. Great. Can I ask you a personal question? What's your biggest motivation for your university life? Because I know that on average, a student with a university education will make more money throughout his or her lifetime than a student without one, but it's not easy to stay motivated in school. What should I do if I lose interest in studying? You should design a life plan and commit to your dreams. Think about it. If your life was as good as it could be, what would it look like? Design a road map. Keep this map in mind. Thank you. One final question. What's the best advice you would tell a friend who is now entering university? Set high personal and academic standards for yourself. Believe in yourself. Realize that school is work, it's not playtime. Settle for nothing less than your very best. Thank you for your advice. I think I'm ready to start my university life. Wishing you lots of success as you begin your new journey. You can always talk to me. Text me if you need help. Sure. See you later. Bye. Talking about your pet. Becky was walking her dog in the park when she ran into her old high school friend, James. They both love dogs and have small talk. Hi, James. Hi, do you recognize me? It's Becky. We went to the same high school, remember? How have you been? Oh, right. I'm okay. Hi, how about you? I haven't seen you since high school. I'm fine. How long have you been here? Is your place near here? I just moved here last week. I live right down the street. And you? My apartment is across the street. I'm taking my dog here every day. Your dog is so cute. Thank you. My dog and I want to hang out in this park too. It's so beautiful, wide, and has so many dogs to play with. What breed is your dog? He is so handsome. He's a Samoyed. He is three years old, so he's about 35 pounds. Wow, his white fur coat is stunning. Such a big, beautiful boy. What's his name? It's Sam. He is a loving dog and highly energetic breed, so needs vigorous exercises. So I have to walk him two times a day. He is so big. Is he dangerous? No, Samoyeds are not at all dangerous or aggressive. In fact, he is a natural-born cuddle bug, but he can be stubborn sometimes. <laughs> so, what about your little guy here? Oh, his name is Pom Pom. He is a Pomeranian. He is only one year old. 
Oh, interesting. Palms are known for being smart, curious, and energetic. Yes, but Pomeranians tend to be suspicious around strangers. And their small size makes large people and animals especially intimidating to them. And they can be aggressive, so it may not be the best choice for families with small kids. Really? I didn't know these small guys can su cause such problems. Yeah, but I had him since he was a newborn. And playing with him helps me relax, so he is like family to me. I know that feeling. Dogs are a great company, and very loyal. We should go to the park together tomorrow. Yeah, sure. Maybe 5 p.m.? Our dogs can play together. Okay, see you then. Bye, see ya. John and Chuck go to a pet shop to buy a puppy for John's daughter. Thank you, Chuck, for coming here with me. My daughter loves puppies, so I really want to buy her one for her birthday. No problem, John. I'm glad I can help. Hi, guys. What can I help you with? Hi, I'm looking for a puppy for my little daughter. Great. Do you have anything you want in particular? Um, not yet. But I think I want one that is friendly and not aggressive. Suitable for small kids. We have these golden retriever puppies. They are confident, smart, kind, and loyal dogs. They are extremely patient, which makes them a perfect match for kids. Yes, and they love to play, meaning that your kid will fall in love instantly. That's good. Do they need any special care? Well, yes, they need proper care for their glorious golden coats, which require twice weekly brushing. Um, my wife and I are very busy. I don't think we have time for that. What about these little guys here? These are poodles. They are great for kids with allergies, as they shed very little. But their coat requires scheduled grooming. Okay, how about these? Oh, these Newfoundlands are considered to be one of the most intelligent breeds in the world. And these dogs just happen to love children and are very protective of them. Yes, I heard this breed is gentle, kind, and patient. Almost like the Mother Teresa of dogs. Yes, that's true, but they best suit a family with large open spaces and they are known to drool and shed excessively, so their long coats will also require regular grooming and upkeep. Um, we live in an apartment, so we don't have enough space for large dogs. Oh, how about a beagle? These are small in size and have a calm temperament. If your kids love the outdoors, this breed will fit right in. Oh, they are so cute and bright. I think your daughter will love it. Yeah, I think so too. Smart, friendly, and happy, the beagle usually gets along with other pets too. I think this is a perfect choice for my kid in my house. I would take this chocolate tree puppy. Is it a female or a male? Wonderful. This is a male puppy, so he can grow up to 22 and a half pounds to 24 and a quarter pounds. Good. Do you have any tips for raising him? This guy is not picky. He eats a lot, and you should bring him outside for a walk frequently. Thank you. I will take good care of it. Great. Thank you so much. If you have any problems or questions, just ask me. Thank you. I will bring him home to show him to my daughter right away. She would be so happy. Great. Bye. Have a good day. 
You too. Taylor invites Jason to come to her house after a date. They talk about their pets for a while. Thank you for everything, Jason. Tonight was perfect. I'm glad you feel that way, Taylor. Do you want to come in and have a cup of tea? Yes, sure, thanks. Here, come on in. Wow, your house is very lovely. Thanks. Oh, hi, Lulu. Jason, this is my dog, Lulu. Oh, wow, a corgi. Is it a male or a female? It's a female. She is a rescue dog. She is old and scared when I got her, but now she is doing a lot better and loves being around people. Oh, what a good girl. She is lucky to have you. Thanks, but I can say that I'm lucky to have her too. Her loving personality helps me through some really tough times. I know, pets are amazing. They are man's best friend. Do you have a pet? Yes, I have a cat at home. Oh, really? Cats are so cute and cuddly, too. I had a cat, too, when I was young. Yeah, I got her when she was a newborn, and now it's been nine years. Wow, she must be so close to you. What's her name? It's Mimi. She is my friend. She follows me everywhere at home. That's cute. What color is she? She is a tricolor. Oh, wow! Tricolor cats are especially smart, beautiful, and rare. Yes, she is the only tricolor in her litter. You can bring your cat over sometimes because my dog is very friendly with other animals. Great! She loves meeting new friends. Maybe next weekend? Sure, we can bring them to the park. Okay. Anyways, it's getting late. I'd better be going home to Mimi. Thank you for the cup of tea. You're welcome. Bye, see you later. I'm so excited to see your cat. Bye, see you next week. Life Then Now Samuel and Thomas, they are discussing the changes in their life. I suppose one of the biggest turning points in my life was when I moved from our hometown to the capital city. What happened at that time? I was 14 years old when I migrated. I had to leave my school, friends, relatives, known places, and start living in a place where I had no friends, no one to visit, and no known place for playing or outing. That should be a frustrating experience for you. But I made new friends very quickly, and my teachers were very helpful as well. But one problem is that I could not secure even a top 10 position in my new school while I was a top scorer in my previous school. I know that. You used to be a smart kid. Yes, I, so I started studying harder, visit the library more, and read a reference book more than once. Do you think it was good for you? Now I think it was really good. I shrink my time playing games and took part in football. Well, those changes helped you study more, learn more, and remain healthy. Yeah, I found that some of the health-related problems that I used to have are no longer bothering me. Also, I'm so glad that I started reading books, as it gave a certain kind of confidence boost by teaching me a lot of unknown and amazing things about this world. For me, I think I am not healthier than I was about 10 years ago. Why do you think so? 
Lately, I have been so busy that I have not been taking enough time to exercise or cook healthy food. Do you think you will have a healthy diet soon? I am having a plan for it. I'm going to clean out my fridge, all of my favorite unhealthy foods, and begin cooking homemade meals. I think I will also drink two liters of water a day instead of soft drinks. To lose weight, I registered at my local gym and started to work out at least three times a week. I felt stronger and happier than ever before. I rarely got sick and my skin also looked brighter. I can see that on your face. I think I regained my self-confidence. I am now much more comfortable being photographed. When I was a teenager, I mainly subsisted on fast foods such as fried chicken, hamburgers, or crisps. Oh. I put on weight rapidly. Hmm. So I think now is the time to start my weight loss journey or I will become overweight. That's true. We are older. We should be healthier. Right. Okay. What about stress? Are you more stressed now than you were three years ago? That's a hard question. I'm probably about the same. So I wouldn't say that I'm more stressed now. But three years ago I was finishing my bachelor's degree, so that was also a stressful time. And lately I've been quite busy with my work, so... I'm probably at the same stress level as three years ago. I think I'm now not as stressed as I was in the past, actually, because I worry less. So before I was more stressed because I worried about everything. And now I've learned to let it go. Let things go. I don't let them bother me. So how do you usually reduce stress? Actually, there are many things that can make me happy. Hanging out with friends and having some coffee or being given a small gift helps me let off some steam. Or just the feeling of trying a good dish brings me happiness. To me, participating in an outdoor of sport, such as basketball, is a great way to cope with stress. It refreshes my mind and cheers me up a lot. Besides, cooking delicious dishes for the family also helps me feel relaxed after stressful hours at my workplace. Perhaps now we have more stress because of the heavy workload and related responsibilities at the workplace. Some people may have to face problems related to the financial burdens in which they may not have enough money to pay for their increasing house rent. There's a lot more to think about in the future. We are older now, so we are more worried about money. But maybe in the next 10 years, job security, things like that, so, sadly, I'm a little more worried about that. Right, everything will be fine. How about you? Are you more worried about your future these days? I'm quite sure. I have a good job, and I like the place I live, so I don't feel too worried about what I will be doing next year, or even seven years. But we should probably plan ahead a bit more. But anyway, what comes will come. Well, this is a healthy attitude to have. Are there any changes in our town? I think it developed significantly in the last 10 years. Did it become industrialized? Yes, it did. I think industrialization is beneficial to our residents and to the local economy, since jobs have been generated. But it also brings so much pollution. I think we are paying the price now for converting our agricultural lands to industrial. Hmm. The living cost is now undeniably high, too. Noise pollution is incredible. You know, now I am getting used to the crowd and noise in the city. So basically, our city has progressed, but there are still underlying issues that need to be improved. Anyway, I think we are happier now than we were previously. Definitely. We don't have to think about studying at school anymore. Yes, and we are happy with our jobs, families, and friends. And I have more free time now, 
so I can spend more time on entertainment, too. Congratulations. It must help with the stress level as well. Yes, I think I'm having a balanced life. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment on my video. Please subscribe to Learn English with Jessica channel to watch more helpful videos. Goodbye.